paper the success drivers. If you don't, raise your hand because we have made extra copies if you don't. I don't want you to be without it so that we make sure that you follow it. And what we're going to do is Joan and I are, are going to do this section. She's going to come first. But what I want you to think about with all of this is we're going to have to trade this back from that and forth. So you want to put it on first? Oh, thank you. <laughs> well, you have to because it's recording. So. Somebody got a 60 second. This is Hello? For the, mic, for the camera. Oh, Only. the camera. We're going to go get started. I'm going to introduce Joe to you. And we're going to kind of go down to four to this. But what we want you to keep in mind is what we covered first, which is that we're moving you to really see that BNI is really an integral part of the business. It's not separate. You can't say one of the questions yesterday in the advanced training. I did not leadership training. I did MSPN in advance. That's why I don't have any points. Oh, wait. So um, one of the questions at the advance was how do I juggle my growing my business with BNI? So it was a perfect segue because this is a brand new chapter, and that's what he was asking. So I want you to remember the diagram that we put up at first, where we drew the sphere, where your business marketing is a part of your growing business. We're actually going to sharpen your sword on how you can increase your business marketing results. That's what it's all about. So you're going to learn techniques and tips that are built into the system that are going to help you increase your results for your marketing, which is for whose business? My Yeah, your own, right? Your own business. So Joan's going to go first. We're going to go back and forth. I don't know how this is going to work on the microphone. But does this one pick up? <clears throat> we'll be fine. Right, Joan, we'll be getting back and forth. Uh, we're recording this for the delinquents that were there here because we really feel, I mean, I'm not going to keep anybody in the system or compensate them if they're not here because you guys do keep trying to be here. And um, I want them to learn it because they're a handicapped teacher. So that's, it's a really serious commitment to move forward because we're really moving and ramping up to a new level. And I really need everyone to get that mindset and know that we're, you know, we're moving in a better direction to get to the results. So Joan's going to come first. Joan is a, a director consultant. She's a member in the Arlington chapter at the present time. She's doing um, travel. <laughs> no, she's not misbehaving. I'm not getting around it. But um, she she directs quite a few chapters for me, <clears throat> and she's going to come up and take the roles. And she also served as a VP, so this is a perfect opportunity for her to kind of give you her feedback on that. So, um, right here, it blended in. Make sure. Okay, I'm going to introduce Joan Foreman to you. Hello. It's really funny, I've never needed a mic in my whole life, so it's kind of whatever. Um, my name's Joan Fulman, and um, I was a vice president for the Arlington chapter for a year. It was really, really hard, because you're the hard person. Um, so as a VP, what do you guys do you find as your 
What high eyes do you guys find as your hard part of being the vice president? Getting people in and enter everything in the system. In time, I need to run the sports when we show up and our visitors come out. I know there's 30,000 bank closed visits that have signed up on. Right. So what else do people have hard times with? The people entering the, the slips. Anything else? How about the attendance? The letters? You guys don't have any problem sending your letters out? Do you send your letters out? And so how many have gotten to somebody that has letter number three? And are they still in the chapter? Good, okay. Well, my, my issue when I was a vice president, just to give you some turn on it, is my chapter hadn't been sending the letters out when I took over. So here comes this military veteran of 22 years, and I followed the book. So I had my chat, I was doing the phone calls, I was letter one, two, three, out. I cleaned up a couple people, but I wasn't really the nicest, you know, I had that bad reputation. Um, but it needed to happen, somebody had to do it, and so letters have to go. Um, currently my chapter that I'm in, we decided to use colored envelopes, does anybody else use those colored envelopes? Because um, our chapter is like, oh, well, well, you didn't see it in the mail. Well, now we have a, <laughs> hey, we got everything. We got a yellow envelope, we have a red envelope, and we have a green envelope. So we have three different envelopes. So can't miss them quite. So anyway. All right, so letters is a good thing. Then that's not one of the issues. As far as um, entering them, when I was a vice president, we didn't have that. We had, <laughs> I entered every slip that everybody gave me. So um, currently in my chapter, we have probably maybe four people that really don't do computers or they're really not computer literate. So we have, we asked the vice president to do it. It happens. But we've also brought in a laptop now. We have a laptop at the meeting and we will log on as that member with the member kind of to give them some lessons on how to do it. Um, so we get their password, we find out who's not doing it, we get the password set up and all that, so that when they come into the meeting, we can help them enter them. Then they go, oh, that's how you do it. Or I'm available my, as a director consultant, my chapters call me or the people call me that say, I can't do it, walk me through it. So I will team view into their computer and I'll, I won't do it for them, but I show them how to do it. So. There's just different ways to get the people to put it in. But if you have 30 people, 40 people, and only four of them aren't doing it, then that's really not that bad. But then the people who, like we have one guy who in my chapter says, well, I have lots of clothes of business. I just haven't got around to entering it. People like that in my chapter were like, put it on a slip. Just give it to us on a slip. Give us the bulk for this person. This per we, you know, we just want it. If you know what it is and you just don't have the time, give it to us and we'll get it in. Let's get you caught up so that you can start. So, because again, you know, $10,000, $20,000 close of business is a good chunk to put in there. So is that kind of what your chapter? Yeah, we've gone back and forth. We've done that. Helps them catch them up. And we've gone back right now. So I brought the iPad set up after it was before after a while. So they didn't want to do it. You were here to help. Yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. Does anybody else have any suggestions for him with his chapter where the people aren't entering the thank you for close of business? The only one I would do is that if, I, if you owed me the thank you for close of business and I knew you hadn't put it in, I'm going to put it in on a slip saying thank you to Joan for whatever amount of money because I want that under my name. And so it's not really helping the person entering it to put it in, it's helping the person who's getting it. So if that person owes, you just have to tell people, like if he owes you, you need to go up to him and say, hey, look, you haven't put it in. Put it in. I need that close of business under my name. Um, or just have, him, have the person put it in. So. so what other issues do you guys have as vice presidents with being the role of vice president? That's it? People not entering the slips? That, yeah, that's next. <laughs> you're the bank. Well, actually, he's the bank. I know you're not the bank. Okay, so because vice president's really easy. It's just making sure everybody's accountable, taking the attendance, turning the attendance in, and sending the letters, and making sure that happens. Um, palms report, I know Ted does it because it touched on it last time. The individual palms, how many of you vice presidents put the individual palms report up every week? You do? Because, you do? 
Because uh, honestly, a couple of the chapters that I'm over, they do that, and the people, when they see that they're in the gray, they're like, ooh, how do I get out of that? Because some of the chapters are very competitive, and they really don't realize where they are. And so, like with his chapter, we've talked about doing CEUs, one-to-ones, you know, just trying to help them move up, and then we kind of add one thing each week to them. So if you put it up, people really are competitive when it comes to things, I know. Mm -hmm. It's very scary the first time you put it up. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's what they do in their chapter. On the screen, it's everybody's up there, so you know where you rank against everybody in the chapter. And have you guys put it on the screen yet? Yeah, we know. So, but people go, seriously, how do you do it? Well, okay, I, I, you know, I've had three guests at this month. Come on, what kind of do you have? Mm -hmm. And visitors, mm -hmm. and I'm doing this. So all you have to do is a little bit more. But it does make them realize. It makes them realize where they stand with everybody else. What, what, what percentage are you talking about? What do you get a percentage? Um, that would be in the... There's a, there's a formula, I think. Do you have, Ted, the formula for the... The template. Do you have it, the template? Because I can have Janice send that template out to all the vice presidents. And it's just a matter of putting the data in from what I understand. That, again, was after my term as vice president. That'd be good. It's like we did bonds, but it's just, you know, the okay. data is 100%. I'll ask Janice because... Do you know how to do that? Okay, so everybody get her card. She knows the way to do it. You probably know as well because it was started in your chapter, wasn't it? Are we talking about the who got the money report? Ye no, we're talking about the individual palms. You guys add on to yours, though. What's that? You add on to yours, though, other than just the report that Flash had put out, right? We got our own. We got a report. We got the money. We track them. Thank you for the palms, but we want to know if you actually get money because as leadership team, we want to know. Oh, yours is or the other one is? Okay. So you can pull it up and it's basically at the data and... The important thing about that is you've got to be able to track that. If somebody here is going to go this online, I don't know how to find out. Are you putting a slip in or something? What we do is if somebody does turn it in online, um, if they fill out a slip in the chapter, if they fill out the income code business, they have them put their name on the back. So no actually. We're doing that. The problem is everybody's so good at putting everything in the line. I don't hold anything on anything. But the bad side of it is, being our system, for whatever reason, they only track for the business. It's a private system. Right. So what you can do is, I know my chapter was chat doing it once, and so what we did was they had we had them fill out a slip, but they put on the one side already entered. And then they would put their name on it, saying that they gave, I gave you, thank you for close of business. Couldn't you write it on the print down? Well, these are printed online. I think if you're going yeah. to the meeting and the testimonial, and even though you do your, everything online, if you're not coming to the meeting and having something printed off. Yeah, your slips. It does nothing for the impact of the meeting on this, but they want to see. So if you do it online, tell your people, bring it, print off your slips, and then you can write on the back as you put in the bucket. Yeah. So we don't really have the problem as far as knowing who got the money. But 
those that come in and don't have a slipper and have to say, well, turn it off or make an announcement or something um, because the, the meeting is visual. Yeah. So that will help if they turn something off. Our slips all have on their uh, check marks for either done online or not done online. Mm -hmm. So that when Deborah gets them, she can look at them and look and see, oh, this one's already done online. But we use everything for the door box. That's why you want to put the slips in. Okay. So our, our, even the banks that close business, everything goes in the bucket for the door prize that you want them to put the paper right. in. So basically, if you can just. Technically, it's referrals and visitors for the door prize because of. Well, we do everything because we want everybody to fill a slip out and it up so that we can verify and make sure it's done. So Deborah does go through and looks at the slips to make sure that they actually end up in and on the phone. So basically, if they get them, if you get them to print them off, if they're putting them in online, just when they finish before they come to the meeting, ask them to print them off, because that would be good to keep track of who actually did it. So, all right, all right, membership committee. That seems to be the uh, main issue with most vice presidents. Um, when I was the vice president, I made sure I grabbed at least an odd number of people of five, and I had my membership committee of five. That way, I wasn't doing all of it. One of my five was the head of my membership committee. I kind of would just sit in the back because, again, I wanted to get the team because I have 30 people in my chapter. So I wanted my team to be the people helping pick the people in the chapter. I sat back and kind of was the mediator of it if there were any issues, arguments, questions, <laughs> which there always will be. Um, so how many of you guys are... Um, during the process where, like Bruce was saying, you give the application and you tell them that, you know, this is an opportunity to join the chapter, not that you fill it out and you're in the chapter. Who's making sure that kind of stuff is being said? Okay. And so then when you're interviewing, so the next step is you're going to call the references. Who calls the references? Is somebody in your, somebody in the team's calling? Okay. And then when you're, are you interviewing, is everybody doing interviews? Does everybody have questions to ask the interviewee? Did you like the three little things that they put up today? I thought that was really good. However, I was a number one when I joined my chapter. Can so. I say something about that? Because I, I purposely missed it the first one. Can you hear me more comment? When you are interviewing these people, um, what I said is the first oh. No. Unplug. Unplug. No, hold it. When you're interviewing these people, what you need to do is you need to make sure that you have more than one person doing the interview. And I need to get where the camera is or else there'll be a voice without. Um, yes, right. You need to make sure that you have one person them when you're doing the interview. A couple suggestions are, and the reason, let me just ask you, why would you want more than one person? Right. I highly recommend that you have somebody from the contact sphere, Bruce. Right. And so we actually, after about 30 to 60 days, we invited that person and the person joined in. We kept them out just because of the personal bias. Mm -hmm. You have to be careful if somebody says something like that, and it's happened a couple of times. And if they're a personal friend that they brought, that person, even if they're on the membership committee, technically should not be on that interview but when we're finding with the interviews these three levels of business that you have you can choose how you want to accept these people because the levels of business are this the very first level that we typically get are these beginner businesses that and it depends like Joan said she was a beginner business but you can by your assessment of questions figure out what level of beginner they are.
if they are so brand spanking new that they know nothing and they're hoping you will build their business, that's the person you need to be aware of. But the only way you can do that is to ask them, what are your expectations about our group? What do you want out of us? And if they say, well, you guys are going to help me build my business, you know why I know that? Because I've had calls from uh, even coaches who say, you need to go search out a BNI and they'll help you build your business. And when they call me, I'm saying, who referred you? And it's somebody I don't know, but they're telling them about BNI. And one guy had never had any experience in his field at all. He was just beginning this. And he was in a critical role that you guys would have had to have more trust. And I said to him on the front, I didn't even send him to you. I said, you know what, we're really not for you yet. You need to have some experience before you come into our organization, because I didn't want to waste your time. And he would have, because he was very, very <laughs> needy, right? And so you, if they, if they don't come through me, and they come straight to you, which they can on the website, you've got to be able to ask those nice but tough questions. And if you feel like they're totally needy and need you and they're desperate, that's unfair to accept them. Just say, look, you know, you're at a point where your business is overwhelming the heck out of you right now. Get some of these things in order, the ones we wrote, then come back to us in six months or so, and we'll help you with, you know, your next stage. If they're going to make it, they'll be back in six months. And if they're not, why did you put them in there? You know, you just kind of wasted your time. Tammy. Well, another best practice might be if you don't have that seat filled, you could go against your 500 person marketing team and ask them to fill that seat. Because they do a follow-up Right. So do your due diligence. Don't accept that person on the front end. The second level that Tammy talked about <clears throat> was that they might come in and they're very experienced and they are not yet at a level of maxing out. However, they're hoping to grow. So this is one question you really need to ask them. And this I learned from the guys in India. They have one of the fastest growing regions, but in, I don't know about the, if you know much about the Indian culture extremely business oriented okay and what they do is they'll interview them and they're glad for their experience but they will say this if you're in this group and you apply yourself and always do that because you can't guarantee them referrals it depends on how they work and what they do right so you can't say oh we're gonna grow your business Uh, -uh don't do that say if you do your part and we do our part chances are very good your business is going to move up and there might be a point to where we overwhelm you what are your what are your um, you know your plan what's your plan most of them will go I don't have a plan you need to decide on that front end let's help you because if that happens what will you do chances are if they don't have a plan they leave you and it's like you building a business team and they're constantly walking out the door. Like Tammy said, after they get a certain growth experience, they leave your team, maybe go start something else. They might not start another BNI. Good luck to them if they do, you know. But um, if, they, if they leave your team, you've got to start all over again. So build with some forethought in mind of, okay, let's help you get a plan and make sure that you realize that if you grow, and help them with the expectations. And I think we'll do a whole leadership lunch on this. What do you do with these people and how do you help them? Because we've got people in the organization that can help them say, you know, here's your plan. When you get to this level, you'll want to hire people. You'll want to do this and that. So be thinking about that. Do you think they'd appreciate that from you? Sure, but who appreciates it more? You guys, because you get a more stable member. And then that third level are the people who really just want the selective referrals. They want to grow their business. They're at a good level. They've handled all the issues, or most of them. And they're coming to you because they want select ones. In this case, I want you to be fair to them by looking and going, what kind of referrals are you looking for? 
because if your chapter is focused in one direction and they are and they are uh, focused in another you might not be the right team for them so be fair about that and say you know what right now our chapter is more maybe trades oriented or more home based and you need business to business let's help you find a chapter that has that focus and then get busy and build your own focus so you don't lose those people again my goal is to help every chapter have a balance so no matter who comes to you you've got good you know balance but it's going to take us a while and it's going to take the effort of you to make sure you do that just think about how you're building your business with strategy with plans with focus build your BNI marketing the same way and you guys are going to be four or five six million instead of one two whatever million does that make sense okay and remember any work you put into that membership committee those interviews is for who I'm gonna keep drumming that in it's for you it's okay it's for you and your team so when you get, when your teams are interviewing um, I, I just assume that chapters were doing more than one person interviewing because our whole membership team does the interview um, the way they do it is they kind of spread out the questions for them but we also announced that today we're going to be interviewing Cheryl and this is what she does so if any of you'd like to stick around for the interview you're more than welcome because once again it is the memberships team that you're building and so you don't want them to come back and say well why did you bring them on and why did you ask this or why did you do that so if you ask them and they are on the power team and they didn't stay then they have nobody to blame but themselves for not staying um, how many are asking for their um, licenses You know that basically if you're, like for me as a travel agent, I have E&O insurance. And they didn't ask me for mine, but I provided it because it's something that I as a business, I have to have. So my chapter makes sure, because we're mostly contractors. Yes? Uh, I had a that didn't have liability until I challenged him. I said, man, I'd love to work with you, but you don't have, and so he went and got it. Mm -hmm. And it's like the next month, you got a major claim. Yeah. And it's saved one of our fellow members. We had two roofers apply to come into my chapter. One had it, one didn't. I mean, and he didn't even know he needed to have it, so he went and got it, but he, we didn't select him for the chapter. So if, if you don't know if your trade is supposed to have it, then you need to kind of do some due diligence. Again, like Tammy says, call somebody in another chapter that has that seat filled and ask that person, do you have you know, a license? Do you have a certain insurance that you have to have? Because the thing is, is when you're referring these people out who are in your chapter, you want to make sure that they have everything. And just because somebody was in BNI before, don't think that they still have it. Because a member in my chapter used somebody who used to be in BNI, and that became a big problem because an issue happened and the person didn't have insurance anymore. So always make sure that the people joining the chapter, that you have a copy of it. When you renew them, if it was up, ask them for a new copy. Because just because I had it when I joined doesn't mean it's still valid when I renew, okay? Okay, Jim. I got to Okay. This is a horror story, but it really is true. Um, that's why you need these uh, renewals to have their, their things. We had a roofer who hired subs, and the subs gave them insurance. It was. It was proof of insurance. And they got audited by some board here in Memphis. The roofer did. And when they were pulling all of his requirements, he gave them the subs and all their forms for insurance. And the auditor said, this isn't, this isn't a good insurance policy. And so he was like mad. He called his sub who he'd used for a long time and said, what's the deal? This guy says, you're not licensed. He goes, what do you mean I'm not licensed? I pay every year for the thing. What they determined was that he was paying. The person he was buying it from was pocketing the money and giving him a false license. Happened. The guy, the roofer, lost his entire business because he got sued by the auditor. I don't know what happened to sub, probably same thing. Totally innocent on the roofer's part 
but evidently the person who did the payroll found out later that there is a site you can check. I'll try to find out what it is, but it's whether or not you have genuine <laughs> licenses. So for some of you to protect that for your own business, make sure that if you sub out, if you do anything like that, I mean, people can sue you. So it's very serious to look at that. I don't want to scare you, but I just want to tell you what happens. And this roofer, it wasn't his fault, but he lost his business over it. Okay. Ah, very good. Perfect. Thank you, Robert. He's insurance. Yeah. That, that's, I just had to inject that because sometimes you don't think about it. It is very serious. And I guess my chapter, we think about it more because we're more contracting side of the house. We have mostly contractors in it. Um, there is a site to go to. I don't know if you know it, but Shona has it. So I can get it from Shona, Jan, and give it to you. Um, how many Google, um, Google the people who are joining your chapter? Do a Google search. Okay, that one you gotta kind of watch. Some are true, some are, you know. Well, yeah, okay, probably not. <laughs> but Google, um, one of the chapters that I'm over, they actually, there was a person applying for a seat, and it was a seat they wanted to fill, and he had a perfect, you know, application and stuff like that. Interview didn't go so well, but they Googled him before. It seems that the company that he's working for had some issues. And so they're like, hmm, the interview, this, we don't want it. So you, there's other ways to interview other than just the sitting down. My chapter, we never tell anybody it's going to be a week. We're honest. We tell them it's going to take probably about a week and a half to two weeks to do a true interview and get all the data that we need. If it's somebody that we will let them keep coming back while we're doing the process, but after the process is done, then they'll do the interview and then they'll make the decision. So there's lots of pieces to it, okay? Any questions so far? Any other suggestions that people can do besides Google? They can't visit more than twice. Twice. Though, because if you take forever, which you should not. No. We've never taken that long. We've never taken that long. <laughs> it's more like two. Mm-hmm. But they're allowed to visit. So. Yeah, so we, we... We had one chapter, four weeks later, still had made a decision. Mm -mm. <laughs> Ours is normally made by the second week, but it takes us, especially since we're doing the licenses and then all the rest of the stuff, it takes us about two weeks to make sure all their credentials are in, in line. So, um, Okay, so once you've approved that visitor and you've gotten the application done, what do you guys do next? I know some chapters do it a lot better than others. Correct, but the problem that seems to happen some. The problem sometimes is that they all don't hook up when it gets to the office. Um, and the vice presidents, you need to make sure basically if your visitor host is entering the person when they came to visit then your secretary treasurer, all they have to do is hit a button that says convert to a member, which I think I showed you guys. So it's so much simpler, you just have to add a couple more pieces to it. But the problem is, is that that application and that payment page are not hitting Brenda at the same time. So let me tell you what some of your delays are. If you don't have your secretary treasurer hit that convert button, it goes to the bottom of Brenda's stack. And if you don't give the copy of the payment to Brenda, they sometimes don't match up. So the easiest way to do this whole process is to have the visitor host do what they're supposed to do, enter it, the secretary treasurer hit convert, and then you take a copy of that application and a copy of the payment slip that that person brought in and send it at the same time. What we've done in some of the other chapters is we have the laptop and they pay that day and we ask them to email a copy of it to one of us who's going to mail it in and then we'll scan the application and we have the payment doc 
and we send them both to Brenda with a little note saying, already converted to member. That's so much quicker, and they're into palms like the following week. If you don't do that, it could be three weeks, four weeks, depending on if Brenda's home, kids, holiday. So the easiest way to get them done is to hit all that. Yes, Joel? No, we're not even on renewing members yet. In, in the... In the can I? No, you're fine. That's why we're doing it. But it's really, it'll be a lot quicker for you guys to get onto the... Um, let me go over here so I don't lose my box. So it's, it's really a lot quicker because I'll go to some of these meetings and they're like, well, we turn the papers in and here it is three weeks later and they're still not showing up on palms. And then I'll start asking questions and digging and I'll find out, oh, the payment was done by a check, but then find out the check didn't go through. I mean, I was right there when one of their members did the check. But Bill, being good Bill, called Brenda and found out that the check did not clear somehow, whatever. So they got another check from the individual. So there's lots of little things that go wrong with the whole process. Why well, she's finding that... I can't it's, type on this computer, it's all different. Why well, she's finding that, I'll um, go on. So basically, there's a new thing now, which is for renewing members. Have anybody done the, has anybody used the renewing member button? Has anybody been irritated because it didn't work? Does anybody know why it didn't work? That didn't got irritated? Okay. Well, I got irritated because I didn't read the email that she sent out. <laughs> you know that director kind of thing? She sends so many things out. I get stuff she sends to everybody. Then she sends stuff to director. So I just kind of put it in a slot that I read when I get time. So I call her and she's like, you didn't read? I'm like, no, not so much. <laughs> so anyway, it's really, really cool because I did it at their chapter the other day. And I was like, oh my God, it's so wonderful. Anyway, so what happens is, when are you supposed to interview these people? When's your membership team supposed to interview? Your at least 90 days. Well, when you go into, when you go into, let's just say you're up for renewal, it's going to send you. You know when you get the letters, you guys get the thing on the email saying so and so's up due. If you go into your 